Hey gang, hope you're doing fantastic today. So we've got our very rainy day as you can see here and I've had about a week so far of no astrophotography due to poor scene, uh, rain and storms, lots of clouds and uh, lots of humidity. So anyway, I thought I'd just do a, a, a short video uh, since I'm working on my stuff um, uh, because there's nothing better to do. <laughs> so uh, today I'm going to uh, give you a look at my uh, Raspberry Pi setup. Um, I have some heat sinks that I want to install into it. And uh, although I never see this running much more than 65 degrees Celsius, so uh, it may not be necessary, but I've got the heat sinks and I thought I'd go ahead and put them on. I also want to show you the case that I've got. It's a Buckeye Stargazer uh, a case uh, for Raspberry Pi that I picked up from a Gina Astro. And uh, I really, really like it a lot. It's much better than the official Raspberry Pi case. Um, this video, by the way, is not sponsored. I bought this case with my own money. And uh, anyway, I just, uh, I like it very much and I thought I'd share it with you. So if you like this video, uh, please consider a like and subscribe. And uh, my name is Doug and this is Astro AF. All right, so I'll go ahead and get the uh, Raspberry Pi off of the telescope here. So I use a GPS dongle. It's a real cheap one and it works really well. EQ mod cable and my camera cable. And then the Raspberry Pi is on a Vixen style clamp that came with this case. I also uh, purchased this fan separately. It's got vents on the top here uh, that the fan pulls air into and then circulates around and then some exhaust vents. Um, I guess it's just on the top. Now there's vents on the bottom as well um, for any air that can circulate around through there. So anyway, we'll take a look at this and let me get the rest of the stuff out of the way. So this is the original Raspberry Pi case. It's the official one. And honestly, it's a nice case and it worked well. I just used a uh, Velcro strap uh, around it and Velcroed it. But um, I, you know, one of the reasons I like this is because it had the uh, Vixen dovetail on it and I wanted to securely mount it uh, to my rail. Um, but yeah, nothing wrong with this. And you know, it had a case fan. Um, you know, and it, it just, it's basic, uh, got an extra card in there. But uh, um, anyway, uh, yeah, I'd, I'll save that for the next Raspberry Pi project, I guess. But on uh, this one, which is the Buckeye Stargazer one from Agena, um, it's built way better than this one is. So uh, it is plastic, it is, I believe to be 3D printed, and um, but it came uh, these, the the dovetail came separately, and uh, um, it screws in uh, to the to the case, uh, as does the fan. Like I said, the fan did not come with this. I ordered it separately. I think I just got it off of Amazon. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's uh, pop this open. It it doesn't come open that easy. Let me get the card out set that somewhere safe the case comes apart okay there we go and I think I'll leave the fan connected we'll set it anyway the inside of the case and you can, can see they've got um, some nuts that are set into the uh, uh, the plastic here and there's little standoff pins that are formed into the plastic that the um, Raspberry Pi mounts into. It doesn't screw in, it's just held in uh, by the two uh, case, uh, the sides of the case fan. And then obviously the, uh, uh, it's got a little um, port through the top where the wiring for the fan can go through right above where I need to plug that in. So what I wanted to do here is um, 
It doesn't look too dusty, but I think I'll go ahead and blow it out. Yeah, it's pretty clean. Alright, so you, as you can see, this already has a heat sink on the processor, and um, I guess I should say that I, I got this uh, Raspberry Pi secondhand. Um, I got it off of eBay. It's a, uh, a Raspberry Pi 4B, and uh, it has 8 gigabytes of RAM in it. Um, I run AstroBerry server uh, with, with uh, um, KSTARS, and uh, Ecos is my control software. So anyway, I have these heat sinks that I'd like to go ahead and put on here today. And uh, as I said, so I've got the, the, uh, the CPU heat sink here. Now I believe what I've got is um, I've got a heat sink here, which is going to be for the memory. And from what I've been reading, you don't really need a heat sink on the RAM because it doesn't get that hot. Um, I've got this one, um, I guess here, uh, it's a little big, but uh, that shouldn't hurt anything, which is um, uh, for the USB chip, which I believe is right here. And uh, then I've got another one, which is for the uh, Ethernet chip, which is right here. So this heat sink should go right here. Probably turn that around. So anyway, when this is done, I think I'll have something along the lines of of this in here. So anyway, we'll see if we can get this. I think that on the backs of these, it's got a little peel and stick, um, which I believe that's a, I uh, uh, can't think of what you call it, but it's it's got the um, uh, material on there to uh, help heat transfer, uh, you know, from the chip into the heat sink. And then I just wanted to, make sure these were clean. So I've got a little bit of isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I'm using 91% on this one. I don't think it matters. You can get it as low as, as uh, 70, I think. And let's get the extra off. And I just want to rub these down and make sure they're clean. So the uh, glue will stick to them nicely. And I suppose while I'm in here with a little bit of alcohol, let's make sure everything's clean. It's pretty clean already. I don't see any. Oh, there's some dirt coming off on the Q-tip there. Should be dry enough already. So 
so I don't know. This one seems to fit the RAM better. I think I might do that way. All right, so let's start with the RAM. So like I said, it's just peel and stick. pushing too hard. Hold it there for a minute. And that feels like it's on there pretty good. So I think that's about all that it needs. Okay. And we'll... The USB chip, that one I think is probably a really good candidate for a heat sink. Um, there's a lot of activity through that USB chip for the um, for the devices and uh, and you know image files and transfer and everything. Let's see if I can. Ethernet chip. Now on this, I don't use the Ethernet too much. I, I use Wi-Fi most often. However, I do use Ethernet uh, when I'm doing uh, updates for the system and software, you know, the system and the, and the client software. And uh, also when I have large file transfers, uh, sometimes, you know, and, uh, and I want to get them done quick, uh, then I'll put it on uh, Ethernet. Uh, just for a matter of convenience, but normally in the mornings, I just um, uh, I just let it run and I go have coffee while it's transferring the uh, the files over to my computer. Kind of got it stuck there. I want to move it just a little bit so it's not touching these pens. Okay, I think that got it. So anyway, I don't know if this will make a difference on cooling. I'll have to watch it and, and see. Um, you know, I think as far as temperature concerned, you know, really what I'm monitoring is CPU temperature. I don't know what it was before this one was installed, like I said, because I, uh, when I received this, it already had the heat sink installed, but the guy I bought it from was nice enough to go ahead and send me the rest of the kit. So um, I thought, what the heck, we'll just go ahead and put it on there. And that's pretty much it. Those are, those are set on good. Um, so I think I can button it back up. Yeah, it's kind of a simple video today, but um, anyway, I hope you like this, this case. I know I do. Um, I, I been, I've been using it for a month now and uh, it um, has been working just 
great. So it, uh, um, the clamp is stable and holds it. Oh, I, I would like to mention about the fan. Um, the fan, like, hardly ever runs. Um, so it, uh, um, I don't know. It, when it does run, it's absolutely quiet. And uh, I have noticed there is no vibration. And um, yeah, like I said, it's just, it's really quiet. And so I can't hear it. Uh, I see the fan turn on uh, when I'm starting up and then it turns off and then it, I have it set for 80 degrees Celsius to turn on. And like I said, I'd never reach it there. So this fan never really gets used. Um, I was uh, uh, playing around with some solar um, uh, earlier this week in between some clouds and um, I saw the CPU temperature came up to about 75 on that right in the direct sunlight and uh, um, but uh, yeah really uh, this thing has a hard time getting to 80 degrees Celsius which is fine with me um, so anyway I think that's all I've got for today I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and uh, um, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for joining me. I'll put some links to this case down in the description. So anyway, if you want to check it out, there'll be some information down there. Thanks a lot.